What a joy to be with you. Pioneer Perfect is what I want to share with you today. And it has to do with this wonderful text you have an outline for all of us on the backside of our worship bulletin and bringing many sons, many sons and daughters to glory. It was fitting that God, for whom and through whom everything exists, the one Creator, our Lord Almighty, should make the pioneer, the pioneer of their salvation perfect through what He suffered. Thanks be to God, my brothers and sisters. I want to thank God for you. Thank you. Brenda and I are so pleased and so very grateful to be members of this congregation. We look forward to coming every weekend. It's so good to be back worshiping. Thank you for the fellowship. Even though we haven't had that intimacy over the past, what, nine months now that we have normally experienced in the context of a congregation, it still has been a wonderful blessing to be able to see you. And I want to thank the praise band, all of you, for the privilege that you have given me to join with you to make music to the Lord. Thank you. Thanks be to God. But I also thank God for my friendship with our pastor. He has been a true servant. We're committed to him, and I trust you are too. I thank God for his leadership. These past weeks... The messages that he has shared with us, right on target, right on target. I, I honor you, brother. He sees the big picture, and it's, it's really a, an invitation into the Scripture so that we can know this perfect plan that God, our Heavenly Father, has revealed from the beginning of time. Brother, you do a wonderful job. I hope you preach at my funeral, won't you? Thank God. I'm blessed. We are truly blessed to have him as our pastor. And so I give thanks and praise to God. I want to share with you that pioneer perfect message, and I'm going to invite you to go into the Scriptures with me because I think that's exactly where we need to be as the people of God. It's, it's Christmas, and we continue to celebrate the season, this holy season, but I want to bring to you a, a little bit of a different Bible passage. It's from Hebrews. I love the book of Hebrews as well. It, it opens up so many different avenues, but some, there's so much there sometimes that we miss the the bigger truths, the bigger point. It's a special word that I want to focus on. It's found in that Hebrews chapter 2 passage I just read to you a few moments ago, but then we're going to get back to it in just a few moments. You see it there? In bringing many sons and daughters to glory, it was fitting for God, our Creator, our Maker, that He should make the, the pioneer of our salvation perfect. Jesus, the Son of God, was always perfect. But that story, His lived reality, we call it the incarnation, that the God who is our Creator has come into our world is one of us. That story, that's powerful. That's good. That's really important. I'm going to ask you, put on your thinking caps, please, and, and get into this beautiful picture of what God has done for us. All right, first of all, this word, it's a, it's a special Bible word. It occurs in a couple of different places. I need to take you to a number of them. You can translate it a variety of ways, author, originator, founder, leader, ruler, a chief leader, for example, a prince. And I'll, I'll illustrate that in just a few moments, but I'm going to ask you to just stay with me, follow with me, follow along with me, please. A prime author a prime author. Now you say, well, what does that mean? We'll get to it. We'll see how the apostles unpack this profound truth about the Lord Jesus Christ who has come into this world. Or author, originator. This may be a little bit more familiar. You've heard this one before. Let's go first of all to Acts chapter 5. This is Peter and the other apostles. I'm going to read it out loud. And maybe I'm going to ask you to, to just follow along and see, see if you can capture the, the important point that Peter is trying to make right here. 
Peter and the other apostles, it's almost as if the Holy Spirit is speaking through all of them. They have one voice here. It's a united front as they, they speak to the religious leaders, but also to the people who have gathered around him. Peter and the apostles, the God of our ancestors, okay, you with me so far? The God of our ancestors raised Jesus from the dead, whom you killed by hanging him on a cross. So he's speaking directly to those religious authorities, to the religious leaders who had authorized the death of the Messiah. They had witnessed it. They had seen it. No doubt. Jesus was dead. You killed him by hanging him on a cross. God exalted him to his own right hand as, say the word with me, prince, prince. You see it right there. That's that special Bible word. Prince and Savior. Prince and Savior that he might bring Israel to repentance and forgive their sins. And then Peter And all the apostles, they have to say this. We are witnesses of these things. We saw it. We saw it with our own eyes. Don't tell me, don't tell me that we didn't see it. I I can almost hear Peter say that. Don't tell me that we didn't see it. Because we did. And so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey Him. So there's that special Bible word. It's translated here as prince. Let me go to Acts chapter 3, just a little bit prior to this time. Peter and John together as they are speaking to a variety of different people, including the religious leaders at that time. You disowned the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you. That was the story. You know it. The people cried out for Barabbas. Barabbas, a murderer. You disowned the Holy One, the Righteous One. And this, here's where it gets interesting to my mind. You killed the, say it with me, author of life. The one who gives life. The one who creates life. He is the author of life. You killed him. But God raised him from the dead. And one more time, Peter and John, together, collectively, one voice, we are witnesses of this. We saw it. We were there. We know what God's purpose was and still is. Well, now, let me take you to one more this special Bible word. We can translate it prince. We can translate it author. Ah, Hebrews. Remember this one? Ah, that beautiful section of Scripture where the writer to the Hebrews, he, he brings together all those saints from the Old Testament, the Old Testament, those beautiful stories of men and women of faith who trusted God in the midst of the most difficult circumstances. And he brings it all together and he says... Well, they all found their fulfillment, their faith orientation in Jesus. So let us fix our eyes on Jesus. Would you read these words out loud with me? They're on the screen. Let's read them together. Let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. Jesus is the pioneer. He goes first. He creates faith. He's the author of faith, the giver of faith. He is the pioneer and the perfecter of faith. Hmm. That'd be enough just to stop right there. Think about that for a moment. But I was thinking about this idea of pioneer. Let's, let's settle on the word pioneer. Let's settle on that truth about a pioneer. Now, what, is, what does that really mean? Well, you could just picture it, you know, the, the thatched huts out on the, on the 
Wild West, right? The stagecoaches, the wagons that are, that are going over the, the plains. I'm thinking of dances with wolves, you know? That beautiful picture, the, the imagery out there, the big open sky. Pioneer, what's a pioneer? Well, someone who has gone first. Someone who has gone first to enter or to settle a region, a land, a place, opening it up for occupation and development by others. Wow. All right. Let's think of Jesus along those lines. You say, well, how? Give me, give me an example. I'm going to take you back to that beautiful passage in John chapter 14. You remember when Jesus is well, he's teaching his disciples, and they're quite anxious. They're very worried because they have heard all this talk about his death. He's been talking about how he's going to be arrested and put to death and, well, raised to life. But they're anxious, and Jesus is trying to calm their hearts. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Well, show us the Father, and, and that's enough. Well... He speaks these words, and I think they're going to come up on the screen right here for you. He says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus goes first. In fact, at that particular story, maybe you remember it. Show us the Father and that will be enough. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Jesus, the pioneer, absolutely perfect in revealing our God. All right, my friends, here we go. I hope I've set the stage for you. I'm going to share with you three ways that Jesus is pioneer perfect. Three ways that he is pioneer perfect. You go with me, please, to the back of the, of the bulletin. If you want to follow along, it's from, again, the book of Hebrews, the very introductory paragraph where the writer talks about the sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being. Radiance and the exact representation. That's what I want to focus on, too. Just for a moment here, in the past... God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways, but in these last days He has spoken to us by His Son, whom He appointed heir of all things and through whom He also made the universe. And then He pauses. He pauses to let it sink in and bring the point home. The Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of His being. The exact representation of His being. Or maybe there's a couple of other ways you'd like to put that out, the brightness, the brilliance. You want to go back in the bulletin, that, that opening hymn that we sang. If you want to go there, just go there with me too. Look at the second stanza for a moment. Now through His Son doth shine the Father's grace divine. Death was reigning over us. I'll get to that in just a moment. Through sin and vanity, vanity until he opened it up. He opened what? A bright eternity. He's the brilliance. He's the radiance. He's the impress. He is the exact impression, expression of our Heavenly Father. You know, you, you see a, a baby smile or a, a child smile and you say, he looks just like his father, or she looks just like her mother. When Mary looked at the faith, face of Jesus, she was seeing the very face of God. Do you see that? So I believe every time my fears come over me, my anxiety creeps up, I believe and every time that I see those people at the hospital where I have the privilege to work, I see the, the deep hurt and disappointment. I see the profound grief, the, the absolute dread, even in the face of death. I believe every time I look to the face of Jesus Christ, I see the Father's face for me. Now, that's what I want for you, too. Okay. Second point, 
that I want to bring with you. Not only is God with us, God is victorious. Now, I'm going to ask you to read these words with me, please, because I think this is the heart and center of what I'd like to share with you. Let's read them all together. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. Do you fear death? Do you fear death? I see a lot of people who fear death. I'm going to be honest with you, I see a lot of death. It's the reality of these past nine months. The emergency department, the intensive care unit, or on the floors as I go from room to room, I see a lot of death. I see a lot of people who fear death. In the ancient word, world, people were very afraid of death. Let me, let me read something to you. This is not just Ken Wagoner sharing this with you. This is reputable scholars. These are, these are words that describe how people felt about death, what they thought death would be like, what they thought the afterlife would be like. They are pathetic in their helplessness, inhabiting drafty, echoing halls, deprived of their wits and flitting purposelessly about. That's what you had to look forward to when you died. No wonder people were afraid. And I'd argue that many people are still afraid today. But not the people of God. Not believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you see those words? Jesus Christ is victorious. Jesus Christ is God victorious. He's the very one who comes into our world so that by his death he might utterly destroy the one who holds the power of death. That is the devil. Satan used that temptation to separate us from God to bring us in to a to a fractured relationship with our father it's almost as if Satan tried to hold on to us <laughs> Jesus Christ comes into our world he destroys the power of the one who holds that death and then here's the good news he frees us for all those people who were held in captivity, held in slavery by their fear of death, it's gone. I do not fear death. Why? Because Jesus Christ is victorious. Believe it, my friends. Trust it. It's true. My last point that I want to share with you has to do with the simple truth that He has given us this forever family. Jesus Christ is our brother. I think one of the great questions in our catechism is this one right here. What can we say about Jesus as a result of the incarnation, the fact that He has come into our world, that He was born of the Virgin Mary? What can we really say about it? Well, the answer that we give the Son of God, the Creator of the universe, we mentioned it before, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, has become our brother. That's good news for me. I love it. He's my brother. I can trust him. I can speak to him. I can call on him. Those moments when I'm, well, fearful, when I'm frustrated, I know my brother is right there with me. And that's what Hebrews says again to us today. The one who makes us holy and we who have been made holy, well, we're one family. That is why that is why Jesus is not ashamed to call you his brother or you his sister. Wow. Can you imagine that, brothers and sisters? We have a brother who is there for us. I think that makes Jesus pioneer perfect. And I'm going to ask you, my friends, at this moment, commit yourselves again to walking in that joy, that confidence, the, the truth that comes from knowing that Jesus Christ has come into our world. What has He done for us? He's brought God near. He is God Himself. 
What has he done for us? He's, he's taken away the fear of death. I am no longer afraid. If I die tomorrow, if I come down with something and God calls me home, I'll be with the Lord Jesus Christ. Hold on to that confidence. Not everybody has it. I see it, unfortunately. Hold on to it. Hold on to it, brothers and sisters. Hold on to it. Because Jesus Christ has conquered death. And we'll be here with you. Brother Jeff, we'll be here with you, brother. Always. Because we have a brother who will be there for us.